present from a friend that is incredible oh my god it's a it's a, for those uh listening it's a sequin cushion you know those sequin cushions where you, you you they show different things depending on what direction the sequins are facing <laughs> so it's black on one side and then when you sweep your hand over it in a very pleasing motion i love these sequin cushions i love playing with them it reveals the mona lisa but Nicolas Cage. With the face of Nick Cage. Yes. I think my favourite thing is at the edge of each line, it sort of looks like a tear because it's the whiter thingy. Yeah. So you can just make it look like it's a, a thing that's been discovered. It's like, what could this be? When I came... When <laughs> and I, then you reveal that it's Nick Cage. When I came down this morning, I discovered that Tanisha had, before she left for work, um, made it just his face. Oh, God. And then written morning underneath it. Oh, that seasons. is amazing. Uh, I bet so... she was like... <laughs> There's no way Probably. you can do that that intricately. And Probably. Not, like, oh, we oh, made, shit, I need we to did make him. it Batman the other day. <laughs> we made him into Batman. But oh, um, I, I, I can't bring myself to do that right now. How Hello! Was, how was your birthday overall? It was lovely. Man? It was. Uh, we, I saw the Rocky Horror Show <laughs> at the Opera House in Manchester. That was really good. That was really, really good. Um, and yeah, made merry and stuff. Was it a Got... science fiction double feature? Science fiction! Yes. Did Dr. X build a creature? Dr. X did build a creature. <laughs> uh, um, did you see androids fighting Brad and Janet? Not androids. Oh. But um, Anne Francis did star in Forbidden Planet. Did they then go to a distant... Yeah. Yes, yes. Planet, yeah. The servants oh, oh, have whoa. gone to whoa, a distant whoa. planet. Whoa, oh. Oh, 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 oh. At the midnight. Ooh, yeah. Double well, feet, 8 yeah. p.m. 8:30 p.m. <laughs> Science fiction picture <laughs> live show. We by did RK by a touring production company. Oh. 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 oh, oh, we did in fact repeat the time slip once again. <laughs> so yeah. Oh dear. Um, um, in case you're wondering, everybody, yes, you are currently listening to a podcast. In the best universe. The best. Um, the best universe. We are your gangly, mangly, dirty and unseemly, unsightly and occasionally just plain filth. We are your infected hosts. Christopher, please don't squeeze me there for I might shit, Johnson. <laughs> and uh, Matthew, touch a touch a touch a touch me. I want to be Watson. Um, <laughs> that made you giggle, didn't it? That's, that's, yeah, it was, it, was the dro- it was the droll delivery. Watson. It's beautiful. Uh, Watson. Which you know else is beautiful? More, more, <clears throat> more. What? <laughs> Pop culture. Yes. Yeah, that's what we talk about here. In case you don't know, welcome to the Big Dumb Cast. Uh, yes. Later on, we're going to be touching on the Lemony Snicket con- conclusion to the Netflix series. I'll give my spoiler-free roundup of it all. Um... We're also talking about the new Ghostbusters film that's in development that is a sequel. What? But not to the film you're thinking. It's actually a sequel to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Oh, don't. I found out this week that... Right. Oh, so, God, no. The what team, have I done? The team that rebooted Teen Ninja Turtles for the previous iteration that was out the last few years... The, the live-action one. ...is rebooting it again. Sure, 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 sure. Sure. Because that's what we sure. need. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Um, we've also sure. got a uh, little bit of nonsense about the 10-year challenge later on as well. Yes. Uh, we're going to find out if it works audibly. <laughs> Let's will. find out. It will. Uh, and also, we're going to finally beat each other up. Yeah. Like we promised last week. Uh, with a Pokemon battle during the show. We're going to have a Pokemon Go battle. Pokemon <clears throat> Go Pokemon battle. But um, first! But first! Hey, Matt! Yes! Did you go on the internet yesterday? Nope! I was completely uh, cut off from the network. What happened <clears throat> yesterday? Well, Was it sir. wonderful? <laughs> well, Is sir. the world fixed? Um... <laughs> I think Trump might be Jesus because apparently he made 300 hamburgers into a thousand hamburgers. Treasus. Treasus? Treason Jesus. Treasus? Treasus. 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 And Treasus May. Uh, Treasus May. 
uh, didn't deliver again, so... A bit like Hermes. Hey! Hey! <laughs> or just, Amazon, like... Just like. got a note through the letterbox. Just, I was in all now. day, and they just put a note through. No one knocked on the door. God, have on that. That's irritating. Constantly. But you know what isn't irritating? Um, antibacterial underwear? I don't know. What isn't irritating? Creams. Creams. Um... Uh, of which there were plenty squirted hither and thither. Oh. A premature release <laughs> of the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer. What? So, last week, Tom Holland teased with a fan who made a really funny little visual skit about them releasing their Far From Home trailer soon because they need to know what's going to happen. Uh, he made a joke, said, like, I'll have a word with Sony. I gotta know! Yeah, I think that meant he knew the trailer was coming out soon anyway and he was oh, just teasing yeah. it up. But it was yeah. great because it got... Uh, considering he's just recently joined social media, Jake Gyllenhaal is... He's doing it really well. Um, the same way Will Smith did when he arrived. It was like, wow, it's like you've always done this. You Basically, are really good at what this. What happened is they just got a personal brand manager. Maybe. But he, <laughs> Tom Holland did a... Uh, uh, last night they announced they were doing the Far From Home. They were going to release the trailer. And Tom Holland uh, live-streamed. The debut of it was on his Instagram story. Well, yeah, because it's Tom Holland. That's what he does. Um, and during it... Zendaya and Jake Gyllenhaal were commenting throughout the whole thread going Brilliant. like, play it! Stop talking and play it! Brilliant. <laughs> Which is like, great. Um, <clears throat> so. Yes. Pros and cons. Yes. Con. Send people into the tizzy. Everyone's now going, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought Spider-Man disappeared did in Infinity War. What's going on? Oh, that's going to be <laughs> fixed. Well, yeah. But keep in mind, there are a big portion of the audience who aren't comic book savvy. Who won't necessarily be, or, you know, or, or maybe genre savvy in a way where they'd see that and go, oh, right, ah, okay, so there's going to be a thing. Or they'd have watched the first one and gone, oh, no, yeah, these people will be back. Like, there, there are those who genuinely believe those characters are gone. Um, you're an idiot. Sorry. Well, I saw someone on Twitter talking about it saying that the moment they realised it wasn't permanent was when both Black Panther and Spider-Man disappeared. They were like, yeah, yeah no, this is not permanent. Yeah. Like, up to that point, they were like, I thought it was going to definitely happen. And then those guys went, it was like, no. The fact that it's all the newer <laughs> characters who disappear, as opposed to the older characters whose contracts are up, Yeah. <laughs> means that, yeah. I, also, like, why would you... Mm, no, you but just there's wouldn't. Also, there's, also wouldn't. Fan th- there's also fan theories bouncing around that this story could take place before Infinity War. Well, it doesn't, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, give, there's a giveaway in the trailer that it doesn't. The plane tickets uh, and the stamps on his face in the poster, which is great, to yes. for the mask with a bunch of travel stamps on it. Yes, uh, confirm uh, the plane. The, the plane ticket in the trailer is more of a solid confirmation because the poster is obviously a teaser. Confirm yeah. that it's set in July 2019. Yes. So yeah, this is after Infinity War and the time thing, unless of course Spider Man's timeline is going to fuck it all up again. Oh yeah, probably. <clears throat> so who knows? This was ten years ago. No, it yeah, wasn't. This, yeah, this film takes place before Spider Man Homecoming, then according to Sony. Yes. <laughs> oh god. Which is impressive. Um, well, he's got to be far from home before he can come home. Now I'm delighted by this as a fan. True, I'm delighted by this um, as uh, a fan of like the recent era of Spider Man comics. Because yes. like Parker Industries and, and Spider Man Worldwide was the big like final stretch of Dan Slot's run. And it was really cool to kind of see him mm. do some more well, sort of like mission led stories yeah, in different countries. It's and just stuff. something different, isn't it? Yeah. Like, so we're getting a flavour of that in this. We're getting to see him in Venice, in London. Yeah. Um I think there are a few other spots confirmed in the trailer, but we don't sort of linger on like, you know uh sort of touristy shots. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Two weeks in Europe, Ned continues to be brilliant. Oh God, yeah. In the international trailer has an alternate take of the dark moment, where he doesn't even get as far as saying like I was just looking <laughs> under my foot. Like it doesn't even get that far. It's really yeah. weird. It's like, yeah. oh, okay. Well, of course, it's also an alternate take of the dickwad moment. Oh, the awkward dub where yeah. he just cuts away to Peter early, and you hear Flash go loser in a, yeah. big, in a bit of audio that's probably cut from the first movie somewhere. Yeah, it's really weird. And again, yeah, and the Zendaya, um, Tom Holland bit of flirting in the theatre is a slightly different take in the international trailer as well. Yeah, which implies to me that they're they're doing the, <clears throat> the in the character scenes they're letting people play mm. and they're pick and choosing from takes. Mm-hmm. Now, as long as they don't overindulge, like, you know, some films tend to do. Is this still John Watts directing, by the way? I think it is, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> the clown guy does it again. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, the story, based on the summary we've talked about previously, appears to be true. Nick Fury recruits Spider-Man's help in a worldwide mission 
uh, to battle against the Elementals, teaming up with Quentin Beck. Oh yeah, they're battling against <laughs> the air quotes elementals. Now, to be fair, we see a creature made of earth, we see a creature made of fire. Yeah, I know. We see a creature made of water, which, and here's the thing, right? So the elementals, for those we've talked about before, for those who don't know, the elementals are like, we're talking Steve Ditko era, kind of like, yeah, yeah. like um, Jack Kirby kind of. Not Spider-Man villains. Not Spider-Man. I think they've, they've probably popped up in like a Marvel team. I mean, or at this point, Spider-Man's, Spider-Man's probably, for everyone. Spider-Man will yeah. face them at some point, um, but they're more sort of like Doctor Strange, Fantastic Four, Thor kind of bad guys. Like, yeah. they're just, they're these big, powerful things that are made of the elements that rock up occasionally and cause chaos. Think the Titans from Greek mythology. Is that yeah. Kind of like that. Um, but. But. When they said that they were going to be the villains in the Spider-Man movie, I was like, that's interesting. Okay. But also Mysterio's in it. Are you really going to, is Mysterio really going to be a good guy? Are you going to pass upon the opportunity to have Mysterio? Because one of the great things about Spider-Man Homecoming, and yeah. arguably the two Ant-Man movies, is the villains were very self-contained to that story. Yeah. And their plan wasn't immediate world domination, which was yeah. sort of refreshing for, for these movies, in a way. Even Doctor Strange had that to a point, because all the damage was outside of our reality. There's just, like, um, one street at the end that gets screwed up. But yeah, it yeah. gets fixed. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of refreshing every now and again, that, you know, lower the scale of the threat. So Mysterio was like, you don't get much lower scale threat than Mysterio. Special, <laughs> special effects wizard with a goldfish ball for a head. Fucking Spidey's shade right throne. No, I love Mysterio, but part of the charm of him is that he's kind of, you know... He's a bit of a source, fuck up, yeah. A novelty, you know, novelty a bit like the Shocker. Movie. Yeah. Um, <coughs> who appeared in the last one. Yeah. And Vulture in the last one. Vulture was terrifying. and It was the way Keaton played it and, and the, the costume design and the music and everything. But again, it was just a dude robbing shit looking scary while he's doing it. Yeah. Small scale threat. Mysterio sort of fits into the same thing. Like, you've got Spidey villains who plan bigger. Doc Ock plans bigger, usually. Yeah. Um, uh, Green Goblin, not so much, but Norman Osborn, definitely. But again, we've seen that. <clears throat> yeah, we've Kingpin, seen Kingpin plans bigger. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, well then again, I still want the MCU to tackle the Avengers sort of Norman Osborn, Green Goblin. Yeah, maybe. That would be fucking incredible maybe. if they did that. Maybe. Um, who would you cast? Uh, Brian Cranston. Ooh, no. no. Everyone cast Brian Cranston for everything. Yeah, so let's cast him um, for the character where we'd have fun. <laughs> no. We can't have Defoe anymore. He's no. Volko oh, now. Oh, no. <laughs> I do want Defoe again, though. Um, who would I cast? As? McConaughey's expressed interest. Yeah, McConaughey would be actually pretty good. A I'd pretty like good to Norman. see him in a villainous role. And his Harry would definitely be the same age as Peter as well. He, well... Yeah. You, there wouldn't be a thing of like, yeah, why yeah, is this yeah. old man? Why is this old man of a 15-year-old son? <laughs> <laughs> like he's 75. He he's crumbling to dust. Oh, wait, that's just because of the snap. Oh, um, but, no. But yeah, so Mysterio's that small scale thing. Yeah. yeah, this is totally a scam. If I remember correctly, one of his first yeah. stories, if not his yeah. first, I might be wrong, was uh, a faked out alien invasion. Yeah. Which they adapt, they adapt into the Spider-Man 2 video game. Yes. It's a fake out alien invasion. And in the comic, Mysterio saves everyone from the aliens at like the last minute. A big specula- spectacular bravado move. And everyone, including Spidey, is like, wow, that's, wow, that's this guy's, really cool. This guy's got some chops. And then they find out a bunch of banks have been robbed during it. Yeah, yeah. But of course, no one connects it to Mysterio. Because everyone's like, well, that, that guy came in and saved the day. We all saw him arrive. I it's, honestly will yeah. be shocked <clears throat> if this isn't... A Mysterio. Um... Well, I mean, the trailer reinforces that potential because he first rocks up at the end looking fucking cool. Oh yeah, like it's what I love about it is it's comic accurate, and then you've got yeah. like the armored plating on top yeah. of it. So like, because you look at those arms and legs, that's the weird little like um, scale pattern green. Is the gloves are straight out of the comic book with the pointy, the four pointy corners. I love it. I love it. Um, I love all of it. And he's minus goldfish ball. He's all handsome, rugged Jake ah, Dillenhall. No, in the long shot, he's got the gold. Well, he does, ball. yeah. But that's what I'm saying. His mind certainly first rocks up, and it's like, and it's the whole, you don't want any part of this, and you go see him fight this giant water creature, and you're like, okay. And then the goldfish ball's there. It's like, yes, it's fucking in the movie. Um, <clears throat> and people on TV at the end, the group watching him on the news, going like, this guy's really cool. He's like Thor and Iron Man combined. <laughs> and people have pointed out as well <clears throat> his powers. It's all the green mists and everything. Yeah. But then you see him fighting the water creature. It's like runes in the air with the eye in it. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. And people are going, that's very Doctor Strange, the way that looks. Yeah. Of course it is. If he's fucking copying stuff people recognise to convince you all he's a good guy. Yeah. It all plays into it. And not only that, here's a fun one. So, I think there is another Spider-Man villain in this film. Which one? 
it appears to be homage because it's the elementals and there is a water creature at the end and obviously you know people go oh it's kind of like this is this is their way of sort of giving us hydro man okay fair enough what if no, it is it's actually hydro man. hydro man it's hydro man and he's in on the scheme yeah and here's my reasoning for why okay scenes in venice there's a shot of ned on the boat yeah. close shot of ned and there's a boat behind him and people are always hiding little visual references in the things. Like there's a cafe in Venice that's uh, no, a hotel, uh, the Di Matteis Hotel. Nice. A uh, Hotel Di Matteis. Nice. So there's, this thing, there's always little visual references to like the artists and the writers and to characters' first appearances. And the code on this boat in Venice is ASM. I think it, I might be a number off, but it's like one, two, one. Or one, it's, two, it's two. the first appearance the of first Hydro The first appearance Man. of Hydro Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry... But unless that's just an extra nerdy layer, they're going, oh, we'll put Hydro-Man's first appearance in the the water elementals scene just to sort of tease everyone. Yeah. No, I think it's yeah, a, yeah. I think it's a calling card. I, th- I think I think I think Mysterio <laughs> is playing big with the scheme. I'm I'm not denying that he might have use he might have use of some cosmic power. He might have got hold of something to use to help sell it. Well, there's still there's no explanation for the rock creature and the fire creature. There's still a bunch of <clears throat> um, like other tech lying around from. Hmm. You know, various Avengers things. things. There'll be even more stuff lying around after Infinity War. Mm. And um, we've got um we've got uh a bunch of armored goons like at one point, like full blown guns in close quarters. So it's yeah. like Okay, so <coughs> we're not stealing yeah. a big fanciful stuff here. No. Uh, the stealth suit's gotta be a stealth suit for a reason. Yeah. But also, in lieu of Tony Stark's involvement in this story. That's where Shield's stepping in. Yeah, well uh, one would assume a newly reformed Shield. Yeah, because uh, but, but also, like, here's the thing, that's playing to younger viewers as well, because what do a lot of young viewers, what was a lot of young, very young viewers' first exposure to Spider-Man in recent years? Ultimate Spider-Man the Cartoon. Ultimate Spider-Man the Cartoon series, which heavily started uh, with the storyline being Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. were training Spidey up <laughs> in his spare time and, and teaming him up with other heroes and giving him tech. Um, so that explained the two new suits. I love in the international trailer when you see the airport scanning and uh, they pop open the case, and there's his Spider-Man costume with a post-it on it from Aunt May. Yeah. Saying, you forgot to pack this. And he looks terrified as he's looking at the TSA agent. And the, the, the French, like French, it sounds like. And she pulls a banana out of the case, and he's like, not allowed to bring this in. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, sorry. And she throws it away and just yep. closes the case. And you're like, oh, brilliant. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Aunt May is doing a thing at homeless shelter at the beginning. Yep. I don't see any explicit references, but it's totally a nod to Feast. Yep. Um, <clears throat> like, answering how their relationship is, it looks like they found a happy medium. And she's encouraging him. She's an encouraging Aunt May. She's like, yeah, you go out there and fight crime. Yep. Big guy, you go do it. I yep. believe in you. To the point where she puts the suit in the suitcase with the initials... BFP. BFP. Benjamin fucking Parker. <laughs> <laughs> That makes me happy. Uh, um, Melissa is... is it, was it Melissa? She's explicitly being referred to as MJ now. It's just like, here uh, you go, guys. Yes. It's MJ. She's this MJ. is the MCU MJ. Deal with it. Do you know she's what? MJ. Fair enough. Um, yeah. And she, she's great. The nerd, the nerd in me is like, give us a bit of homage. Give us like a, a red streak or a tint or something. Yeah. Just, just one in the hair. Just one little just one little nod to her famously Just a little hair. one. But I, I am all for these two playing off of each other. Flashes um, back with the closing <laughs> lines of the trailer fanboying over Spider-Man. Yeah. They're doing it. We're getting to see it in a uh, film. Amazing Spider-Man 212. Yeah, ASM 212. The first 212, yeah. Man. Yeah. There, there it is on the boat. Yeah. It's just like, that's too, it's too specific a uh, scene to put that in. But then, uh, the rock <laughs> creature could be Sandman. Could be, but I don't, I don't think you want to throw a million villains in. I uh, mean, this Apple Homecom- on Polygon. Homecoming juggled three. Yes. Uh, Tinkerer, um, actually four in Homecoming. Tinkerer, Shocker, um, Vulture. Yeah. But there was two Shockers, and the first one was credited as um, Montana. Yeah. So one of the Enforcers. One of the Enforcers. Who was Shocker in Spectacular, Spectacular Spider-Man. Yes. Because um, they decided to combine those two characters together in that. Because they, why they not? It really well. Herman. Because <laughs> yeah. um, um, when, when he died, I was like, "Did they just kill off Shocker?" And then he hands the gold to the other guy, and in the credits, the other guy's credited as Herman Schultz. This, like, yes, this article. <laughs> Shocker is in the MCU. This article <laughs> on Polygon also posits that maybe the maybe the um, 
the fiery lava dude is Molten Man? Too much, I think, because Molten Man's not a big creature. He's no, just no. He's a normal but sized if, dude. And also, if Mysterio's... you are digging up one hell of a, of a, a bag of cats there, because it... it's Liz Allen's older brother. And mm-hmm. it's like, are you really going to do a whole thing about. Yeah, this is also um, freaking Vulture's kid. I think there have and... been multiple Molten Men. No. Yeah, but it, it just... It, nah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it would be neat, though, if... The, if this Besides, is... you don't want Molten Man, Molten Man in the MCU when you are so clearly about to introduce a dude covered in flame in the next year or so. Mm. Look at the rise of Fantastic Four related I stuff think... Marvel have been putting out recently. 20... It's like they're testing the waters. 2020, <laughs> maybe... I know, but you don't, so, you don't you don't want to have you don't want to have two MCU characters who basically look if the same. They're doing Fantastic Four, which they so well, are. Sorry, when they do Fantastic yes. Four, <laughs> they're not going to start shooting it until twenty twenty at the earliest. I don't know. I'll, I'll say this: there's been a lot of quiet lately. We don't know what the slate is beyond Far From Home. We know a Black Panther sequel is happening. We know a Black Widow film's in development. And we know that there's a third Spidey film projected. That's the only cert, cert we know now. Well, it's because they're doing Inhumans. No. <laughs> but do, you know, but do you know I mean? Like, those are the only, those, those are the only definite Eternals we know. have been developed. We know they talk about, yeah, Eternals. And we know um, we know that Guardians 3 exists in some form. It's yeah, just, it's Kevin just... Feige was out there again recently saying, yeah, it's going to happen. I, I don't know when, but it is going to happen. I hope they at least, I hope, I hope he at least convinces Disney to let them use James's script. I don't see it happening, honestly. Yeah, I wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if they do sort of get a bit of a boost if um, uh, Brightburn does really well. Yeah, have you seen the trailer for that? Yeah, horrifying. Mm. I love it. It's like it's Superman. Um, oh, oh no, no, <laughs> like, mm. no! I don't want this, but I really do. Mm-hmm. In this, and it means that DC and Warners can't do an evil Superman story. Well, someone else will have done it, and they'll have done it better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it means I'll have to <gasps> be creative with Superman. Um, no. <laughs> um, oh god, Gail Simone recently on Twitter, someone said like, "Yeah, but Superman's really boring," and like that's why I never want to write him. She said, "If you don't want to write Superman, you're not a writer. Hey. And if you don't have an idea for Superman, you're not a writer. I don't have an idea because that character is infinitely interesting." You've all just tricked yourself into thinking that grim and gritty is where you're meant to go to have interesting stories. Yeah, like, like there is so much you can do with Superman. Superman is boring. Mm. He's too powerful. Yeah, because the good Superman stories aren't about him beating up bad guys. Mm. Like that's not what that's not what's interesting. Those about are him. those are your punch the air moments where you go, yeah, yes. fucking cool, and you make those moments cool. Like yeah. they're really cool when that happens. Um, Captain America in the MCU is the best cinematic iteration of Superman since Chris Reeves. Yes. <laughs> Like they, well, Brandon Ruth did a good job, but I, the idea of, of the tone of the character, yeah, like, yeah, Captain America nails it. He inspires Captain people America around is, him. Everyone goes, "Oh my god, Captain America is such a badass!" It's like, yeah, do you remember what you were saying before the first one came out? Yeah, and then you watched the first one, you went, "Oh, yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess." No, you're yeah. like, "Oh, he's badass." Yeah, it's because yeah. they're not wavered the character at all. See, the thing is, they've not changed him or altered him at all. They've just let you go. Oh, well, Gus, I'll watch it and then enjoy it. The thing with <laughs> the thing is, is that Superman's greatest power. Isn't his strength or his durability or his speed or his flight or his X-ray vision or his heat vision mm. or his um, uh, frost breath? It's his ability to inspire everyone he meets to be Better. the best version of them yeah. that they can be. It's about yeah, his, his greatest power is his influence and his good, like his goodness. Mm. Um, that's it, and and again, that's why. To sort of bring it back, that's why Spider Man in, in, endures because again, it's about this kid who and why the idea of Spider Man helped inform a movie that didn't even feature the Spider Man we're all yeah. following anymore. Um, like the idea behind him, the idea of you get back up and you do the best you can because you can do it. Like, that's one of the things Spider Verse really nailed. Yeah, the, uh, there's always been an element of, but it's never really been done as well in any other Spider Man adaptation. As the, yeah, it wasn't like beyond, beyond the origin, it yeah. never really comes up in the movies. No, in any way. Um, it is I a mean, Spider-Man bit... Two, arguably the best Spider-Man movie, maybe on par into the Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, like Peter gives up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now he eventually gets back up, and that's the point. But it's the whole thing of there you go. Like 
dude. <laughs> he does the um... Doc Ock. In, uh, Doc Ock um, lives out that message a little clearer. Yeah, by the yeah, end. yeah. He gets it in a bit in Homecoming where he lifts the heavy thing. He does lift the heavy because that's the that's the in, that's in, the, in the master planner um, sort of homage yeah. shot. That's the which, uh, which the is go to PS4 example. as well in PS4 yeah. in the first in the first sequence when you lift that rubble for those people. It's sort of it's a clear nod to that shot. He lifts the heavy thing. He lifts the heavy thing. Spider Man um, lift the heavy thing. Barry run faster. <laughs> do a do a bar- do a flip. Do a flip, Barry. Uh, <laughs> Spidey, Barry, do flip. It's the Flash from YouTube. Do a flip. <laughs> um... <laughs> So yeah. Nice. Oh, and Scorpion was in Homecoming as well. Yes. So albeit, I'm... albeit pre-tech gangster, no. what not I... a private eye, but could totally end up being put into an experimental suit. Scorpion. As I was trying to say before we went off on the Fantastic Four MCU DC tangent. Yeah, the best um, kind of tangent. I would, <laughs> I if if I was writing a story where Mysterio fakes the elementals, I would have him. You be using a crew of grifters who all have weird powers that he enhances with his special effects wizardry. Yes, that would make sense. So if it would make so sense if it cool. was yeah. Hydro Man, Molten Man, um, Sand Man, definitely Hydro Man. Who would you do for like an air elemental? Um, I think that'd be down to him. I think yeah. that'd all be down to him. Um, but Keaton is in the movie. Keaton is in the film. There's nothing to say that you can't. Yeah. The air elemental can't be represented by a big fucking bird. Big bird. Oh my god! If they did this, yes. And then chuck one more bad guy in. It's basically the Sinister Six. Sinister Six movie. The second one we'll have had after um, Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, which had six villains in it. The one, the one that that Sony have been trying to do forever, and, and then now better then movies have done it. Just stealth do it. <laughs> Working with Marvel. Just like, oh yeah, we've just got all these ideas and uh oh oh look, we made this Sinister Six movie by mistake. Oh, what are you gonna do for your Spider Man standalone universe films now, Sony? Yeah, sons of bitches. You tit. You big old tit. Um uh, what so, do we think of Fury? I love the shield involvement, I love the Fury. I love I love Fury. the meeting, it's so because this it's is technically so Nick Fury. This is technically film one in phase four. Yes. Phase four begins with this film. This is first post endgame. Yeah. Film. Phase three's been so long. Um phase three has been the longest of the long. The longest phase. Coming to the point where the other box sets they've been releasing. Yeah. There is now a phase three one out and it's phase three part one. Yeah. And it ends with Black Panther. Um yeah. so yeah, that's right, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, the Civil War, Doctor Strange, um, Guardians Two, yes. Spider Man Homecoming, um, Infinity War. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Thor Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok and Black Rocket. Panther. Black Panther. Like it, it, it's those six yeah. in that box set, and then the next one will be Infinity, Infinity War, War Ant Man and, and the Wasp, Wasp, which I rewatched last week and is amazing, and I love it. Um, all the stuff in the school is just some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. Yes. Um, it's good. It's good. It's just brilliant. Like, <laughs> like him, just him, just hobbling down the stairs. Just to get thinking to the about it. Just it's thinking about great that visual, visual gag and them saving uh, Luis's um, like flashback story moment for when he's got the truth serum. Like saving it for like an <laughs> there hour. There is and no ten such thing as truth serum. Oh god, I love it. It is truth serum. <laughs> On the Blu-ray, there's a series of outtakes which are just alternate takes of Stan Lee's cameo. Oh. There's like ten different versions. He says a different line in all of them, oh. and each one is funny. It's brilliant. I, lo- I love the one they went for. Like, well, the '60s were fun, but now I'm paying for it. <laughs> 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 one, of, one of them. One of them's like, "Hey, my phone was in there." <laughs> and stuff like that. Oh, no, I think one of them was, hey, my pills are in there, which is like, oh, that's such a dark joke. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, oh, so, yeah, so the next one would be good. Uh, Infinity War, I'm on the Wasp, um, Captain, Marvel. Captain Marvel, and uh, Endgame. Endgame. Yeah, so, so it'd, be, it'd be a four disc box set with a shit ton of special features, I'd imagine. So you should have left Black Panther till the next one, I guess. But, um... <clears throat> oh, no, they did. Ah, that's why I was confused. Yes, no, Black Panther has been saved to the next one. Because I remember seeing it and going, they've really left out Black Panther out of the box. There. Uh, and I was okay. like, oh, they've saved one. Okay. Yeah, because so then it's five and, and five. Five and, other. Yeah. five and five, yeah, you're right. Yeah, five and five, ten. ten. movies in phase three. Ten movies. But this is this beginning phase four, it, there's a nice mirroring. Tony's protege 
Yeah. Being approached by Nick Fury, who's going, Yeah. You think you're you think you're the only one who does this? You think you're alone in this? Like, I'm about to get involved and yeah. and bring you in. Do to, we to the think world of Shield? Do we think Are Tony's... we going there? Are we are we gonna address the half dusted in the finger snap elephant in the room? Are we gonna do it? Let's freaking do it. The check at the beginning that Happy's holding is signed by Pepper Potts. Yes. Who te- technically has been in charge. She's of, the Stark she's been, CEO. She's been yeah, the CEO yeah. of Stark Industries since Iron Man 2. Yeah. But the inclusion of Pepper, the inclusion of Happy, yeah. the inclusion of Fury now mentoring Peter and yeah. sort of taking him under his wing does imply that someone's not around anymore. Now it could be because he's finally buggered off. But that is not in Tony's character. Iron Man 3, he gets rid of all the suits and decides to focus on being him. Age of Ultron, we learn that in the year since then, yeah. he, he's put his focus into the, 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 the mission of getting Loki's scepter in the yeah. Avengers mission. Yeah. But then we learn he's also been planning fucking Ultron. Yeah. As, 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 and Ultron is a direct follow-on from Iron Man 3. It's like, a suit of armor around the world, like we shouldn't have to do this. Like, let's why don't we make something that we can do it for us? We don't have to do it. Mm. But then Tony keeps appearing in movies, and Tony's been making new shit. Yeah, because he gives up at the end of Iron Man three, and then in Civil War, the reason that he's broken up with Pepper is it's because he couldn't stop. He yeah. just couldn't stop. It's not in Tony's nature to do that to to to, to call it a day. Unless he's made to stop. I think one of two things is going to happen. By not existing on this mortal coil anymore. One of two things is going to happen. Yeah. Either one is going to make a heroic sacrifice in Endgame. That's my my theory. Uh, or him, two, theory. De- uh, defeating <laughs> Thanos will finally give him the closure he needs to just stop and properly retire. Yeah. I think to do that though, you need to then you need to keep him out of the films, if that's the case. Yeah, like, he needs to. No, I think they will. I think they will. I know. I think either way, whether he's dead or alive and still knocking around, this is the la- the end game. Is the last time we'll see Robert Downey Jr. in a in a Marvel film, possibly barring a small cameo, Stan Lee style here and there. As yeah. the as the movies go on, I still, I still, I'm still sticking to my thingy of sacrifice play in End Game. Because that's what Cap challenges him to in Avengers. Like, you're not the one that makes the sacrifice play. And then, of course, he does in Avengers, and it fucking ruins him yeah. in Iron Man 3. And then he thinks he's he thinks he's all together again, and then stuff like Civil War proves that he really isn't. And then the vision he has in him, or Age of Ultron proves that he really isn't. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's ultimate closure for his arc, if, if he makes the sacrifice play and saves the day. Because um, he's stared death in the face already yeah. several times now. So it's like he's like, no, I can do this. Well, um, and and Cap and Cap Cap gets sent back in time to an alternate history where he makes it to the dance. Um, it's a lovely ending for those characters. Maybe, and, and then we get a Disney streaming service series about Sam Wilson and and, maybe and Bucky Barnes. Cap is, taking up the mantles of Captain and America. Maybe Cap is in the. Maybe Cap. Gets, maybe Captain America. They have to spoon. Maybe maybe part of Cap's sacrifice is he gets trapped in the Soul Stone, <laughs> and his existence in the Soul Stone is him living out a life with Peggy. As nah. Sort of, rewrite time. Sort, send him back to Pe- rewrite heaven. time. Send him back to Peggy. <laughs> send him back to Peggy. <laughs> Give them both a happy ending. Oh. We know Peggy. We know Peggy had a nice life, but she always held on to what could have been. So give alternate Peggy the happy ending at the same time as Steve. I'm Do so it. excited for Endgame because, as much <laughs> as I want to see an infinite amounts of Chris Evans as, as Captain America and. Um, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. I also want closure for those characters. Yeah, because we know it can't last forever. So better to go out on a high. Yeah, and that's the thing you don't get with reading comics is you don't really get closure no, because it's, it's very rare that a character bows out for yeah. good. Occasionally they'll do like <clears throat> what if future stories, like yeah. in the two thousands, Marvel did that run of insert series name here, mm. the end stories. Yeah, that were like f- f- um what if endings for various characters and teams in recent years um, has been some sort of like oh they finally done it like the death of wolverine which was they, permanent until it wasn't then they brought back old man logan from his timeline so yeah. that so uh, alongside there being wolverine being x23 and now Wolverine's there was also back. a logan there 
and now Wolverine's yeah. back. Which I've not read any of his, his returns. Yeah, I'm so. so behind on all that. I, 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 I should I'm, probably catch up. I'm, I'm still catching up on Spidey. Um, yeah, I need to catch up on Spidey, man. <laughs> Do you need to catch up on Spidey? I, As we I, will. I jumped on into... On the July 5th release date. Yes. Of Fathom I, I jumped into um, the new Jason Aaron Avengers and oh. uh, Immortal Hulk. Well, we talked about Immortal Hulk on Best of 2018. Yeah. Um, so I'm... I'm I know some of what's going on in the current Marvel universe, but not a lot of it. Okay, so you no. you dabbled. Yeah, I know that Captain Marvel at the head of Alpha Flight has replaced Sword as the in, Wait, as the interstellar defense. Captain Marvel and the head of Alpha Flight. Car- no, Captain Marvel as the head of Alpha Flight. Alpha Flight has replaced Sword. Yeah. What? So Alpha Flight is now a organization that's been scaled up to be a planetary defense thing. Okay, I um, mean, good for them. <laughs> Takes them out of the Canadian mountains for a bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know that. I know that um, that's kind of it. That's <laughs> all you need to know, really. A lot of it's gone back the to the status quo, really. The, of, uh, the, 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 the past. But yeah, uh, July 5th, Spider-Man Far From Home. Excited for it. Let's talk about something that you've watched and enjoyed recently. Let's talk home. about... Um, no, when, when you're oh. not Randy Pitchford. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not going to go into that new story but fucking hell you should look that up um, and tell me about Lemony Snicket Chris uh, a series of unfortunate <clears throat> adventures what the hell that should be the spin off <laughs> unfortunate <laughs> adventures uh, yeah so <clears throat> my favourite books as a teen weren't Harry Potter fuck you everyone else Fuck you, Harry um, Potter! Though I did enjoy them, but they weren't my favourites. My favourites were Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, which were 13 books released between 99 and 2006? I don't know, don't look at me! Um, featuring uh, the, the, the stories about the Baudelaire orphans and the tragic fire that takes uh, their parents and their home away from them, and then the series of guardians that they are uh, taken to be uh, adopted by as arranged by the the person in charge of orphan affairs and their fortune, Mr. Mm. Poe, at the bank. Um, They first go to stay with Count Olaf, who is their uh, closest relative, uh, geographically. (laughs) I love that. I do love that. Brilliant. Um, So, yeah, they go to stay with him, who's a a, a, a head of an acting troupe, a despicable human being, an alcoholic, a bastard, a very violent man. Uh, who makes it very clear quite early on that the only reason he's taking them in is because as soon as Violet becomes of age, he's going to steal their fortune. Of course, he, he he's is. like, I'll be in charge of it because I'm your guardian. <clears throat> and then when they make it clear, well, we won't let you, he hatches a horrible scheme uh, whereby he puts on a play with his theatre troupe and Violet, it's going to be called The Marvelous Marriage and Violet's going to play the bride in the story. Yes. And he's playing the handsome count she's going to marry. So it's all kinds of creepy and weird. Oh, yes. But they, they discover... Over the course of it, that basically he's the marriage documentation is going to be official, and Justice Strauss, their kindly neighbour who is a judge, is going to officiate the wedding in the play in universe and but, in yeah, universe. Yeah, so so through some yes. absolute genius wonderfulness, Violet, the very last minute through hardships and tolls and everything undumbered, um, uh, Klaus saves uh, Klaus and Sonny get uh, sort of save themselves that they you know. Uh, Sonny's the baby who bites things and Klaus is the bookworm, yes. the middle child. Uh, and Violet, the last minute in the book, and they changed it in the film to annoy the book readers. Um, <laughs> uh, last minute in the book, she signs the document and everything is thinking and Count Olaf proudly announces to the audience that they've just been witnessing a fort, you know, a fake show and it was a scheme and he just bra- brags about what he's done. Mm-hmm. And then Violet points out that she signed the document with her left hand. <laughs> and she goes into the lore of it all and how it's like, no, it's going to be done with like the correct hand, this, that, or the other. And he then starts to turn it around, but of course, at this point, the audience are advancing. Like, hang on, we've got to stop him. So he escapes. Stop him! So the next seven books are then being assigned to different places and people, and Olaf's relentless pursuit of them through the means of disguise, murder, and subterfuge. Um, Sometimes all at once. Now, series one of Lemmy Snicket's a series of unfortunate events came out on Netflix in 2017 and did a really yes. damn good job at adapting books one through four. So that was great because it was like, oh, let's watch how those stories can be uh, adapted straightforward-wise, because the film adapted the first three books, but yeah. mashed them to work it into a film. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you weren't necessarily 100% happy with the 
prior movie adaptation. Yeah, I wasn't, As a I, fan. Wasn't, I wasn't a big fan of the movie. I think it's a gorgeous looking movie. I think it's got a great tone. The score is one of my favourite film scores ever. You do love a good film score, though. I do. That, that's a Thomas Newman one, and it's, it's beautiful. Um, and I thought the casting for the film was very good. Uh, the, the unfortunate side was um, once Carrie was locked in as Olaf, Nickelodeon Studios reworked a lot of Olaf's dialogue and tone. Yeah. Uh, which sucks, because when you watch the costume tests, Jim Carrey is improvising in character in all four of the costume tests on the DVD. And he's so much creepier. Yeah. And it's like, God damn it! Like, you know, that's why he signed want, on to do it. And then he... Well, I want that, yeah. Olaf! Yeah. But great casting throughout the films. Like, um, Timothy Spall as Mr. Poe. Billy Conley as Uncle Monty. Meryl Streep as Aunt Josephine. Um, you know, it's like some really, really solid casting in there. Jude Law as the voice of Lemmy Snicket. The, the mysterious author of these works. Who, throughout the books is basically letting you know that this is an investigation into what happened. He wants to find out what exactly became of the Baudelaire's <coughs> the and Baudelaire. put the story out there in the hopes that it might, you know, Orphans. raise more awareness of what happened and eventually find out what became of them. Yes. Um, and he, he keeps saying to everybody throughout the books and throughout the series, they do this, uh, they keep reinstating, like, if you don't want a horrible story, you need to stop watching this. Or you it's, need to stop reading. Like this is not for you. It's like, going to be horrible. Yeah, like, it's 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 so well done. Um, so, uh, you know that's that's it's it, it's great because the whole thing is constantly daring you to stop doing it. The theme song for the show. The lyrics are "Look away, look away." Yes, <laughs> I, th- I think I, I, I watched. The, I only think I, I think I only watched the first one actually. The first episode, episode. so yeah. the first half of the bad beginning. Yes, because uh, that's what's really nice about this. Like it's they went in with a plan, and the plan was three seasons, adapting all thirteen books, two parters for every book, except for the last book, which would be a one episode, but a slightly longer episode. Um, I do like it when they have a plan. Well, Netflix gave them series one. And said, like, we'll green light series two and three, based on how it does. And within the first day of streaming, they went, yeah. So they went, yeah, fuck it. You can have it. Go make it. And the turnaround was phenomenal, because they got series one out in January 2017. Yeah. Series two out in January 2018, and series three in January 2019. And it is... Which you'd have to, I guess, because the kid actors age quickly. Especially Sonny Baudelaire, which they reference. Yes. They reference she goes from being a tiny baby to a small toddler over the course of three series of stories that take place over the course of about four months. And they reference it in series two. Brilliant. There's a uh, the Series one ends with them sat outside the vice principal's office in the in uh, proof of preparatory school, leading into the events of the Austere Academy. Um, and then season two opens with them still sat there and they comment on how they wait, feel like they've been sat there forever. <laughs> it's almost like they've aged <laughs> in waiting and then it just has sort of a lingering shot on Sonny for a second as you go that baby's bigger <laughs> <laughs> which is really nice it's just because the, the show the show wonderfully I do think I need to watch this the show wonderfully breaks the fourth wall in lovely subtle ways there is no fourth wall aha uh, like in, in the run up to the marvellous marriage being performed at the end of episode two um, <laughs> there's a whole thing where the all us complaining about the theatre is so underappreciated, people waste their time sitting at home watching streaming television like the pigs they are. The yeah. <laughs> things like that. So it's, yeah. just, it's just loads of things like that. There's loads of little nods. There's a bit. There's a bit in the last season where uh, Olaf is is berating someone for something, and he says, um, "This." Uh, uh, he says something like, "This." Um, this this absurd Nickelodeon will not stand. <laughs> and, you know, which, which, you know, he's, he's, referring, he's referring to a display, so it's this yes. Nickelodeon, this penny cinema. Yes. But you're like, that's them going in their third yes. season. Fuck you, movie adaptation. Yes. <laughs> like, at the end Very of good. Um, Very good. Which is nice. And the thing is, a lot of the people involved in the movie are involved in this, but it's the people who were involved in the earlier production yeah. who then kind of got shoved to the side, including Daniel Handler. Lemony Snicket himself. Yes. Out. Uh, Daniel Handler is the American author who, who plays the role of Lemony Snicket in the books, um, and, uh, and you know that because the spoiler alert: the reason the author's name keeps being brought up is because the author is a character, uh, not in the stories, um, merely trying to find out more. But uh, the more, the more, the more it goes on, the more you realise how connected he is to all of it. Um, 
And this series finally kind of yes. wraps it up in a way that has upset some fans of the books, I've noticed online. Uh, book 13. That never e- happens. Every 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 book has 13 chapters, and there are 13 books. Uh, every cat had seven words. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but, like, so book 13 yeah. has a chapter 14. Oh. And the chapter 14 is set uh, sometime after the end of the story, and sort of gives you a, and here's what possibly happened next, but it's still ambiguous. Sonny grew into the largest baby the world had ever seen. Sonny was Hydro Man all along. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, so what this does is this ad- this adapts the, the epilogue. Yes. And expands on it. Yes. And I liked it, because again, it's, it's, I don't like it in some mediums, like The Walking Dead, for example, Robert Kirkman is involved in The Walking Dead in every possible way, but some story decisions he made in the seasons I watched made me go, I don't see why you've changed that. I don't know how much... I think you just changed that for the sake of changing that. Your story had more impact when this happened to this I don't know how involved he is anymore, to be honest. But but in the early seasons, it's just like choices they made. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, The only character change they made in the books that I was kind of there for in the first, second season was keeping Shane around a bit longer. Yeah. Because it it, it built up the tension between him and Rick. Yeah. Um, Like, that's fine. Because Shane is just in book one of of the first story arc of, of, of of the comic. And then he's dug up in story arc three briefly yes for being shot in the head and then buried again yes um bit like my interest in the show yeah dun, 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 dun. hey um <laughs> oh god uh but this this is one of those where it's like this is not the books no it's an adaptation and as such daniel handler's well within his right to go do you know what i'm gonna yeah. add to this a little bit like Not, if, if anyone is I mean, in there are changes. to do that, there are changes fucking wrote in the it. series. Yeah, there yeah. are changes in the series. New characters are invented to help with a, a an ongoing like through narrative and stuff as well. Um, so there's plenty of that going on. Yeah, and it works really well. Some characters are combined. Uh, some characters are, have their backstory um, extended so that they appear earlier than you realize if you're a reader of the books. <laughs> earlier than you realise so when they do pop up in the story you go wait it's them that's neat like which is really 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 cool there's a character in series 2 that does that especially each series has a subplot that's you know like not the main story going on during it yeah yeah. that you as the viewer get to follow Um, each series has a distinct one so there's one in the first series there's one in the second and one in the third they're all tied in and they all are connected to what's happening in the stories but it's, it's nice because it means you can always think of it as, oh, the series with those two characters doing this. Oh, the series with uh, those three doing that mission. Oh, the series where this is happening. Do you know what I mean? So it's quite nice in that way. It gives each series mm-hmm. its own flavour, even though it's all one big story. Um, series three was such a great way to wrap it all up. I mean, where to begin? Uh, casting, the, the returning cast are all excellent. The Baudelaire's are fantastic. Um, they get a bit more, a bit more to... F- to flex and play around with this year because that is one problem of the first couple of years there's a lot of samey notes from them and them as actors were doing you know doing well but it just wasn't quite hitting yeah this year they get a lot more to play with um and and they shine um neil patrick harris is olaf my god yes <laughs> a thousand times he's the guy because this is the, the series series three adapts the slippery slope the grim grotto the penultimate peril and the end and this is the most, again, up and down that Olaf gets to be because he meets certain characters which change the status quo for him. Yeah. Um, he gets to do some of his nastiest stuff in this series. Like, some of the stuff that makes you go, oh yeah, we're laughing watching him, but also this is a horrible, murderous I mean, individual. he is a nasty-ass cracker. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's, he's the so... worst of all the honkies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> God. Um, and this, I mean, they even, they even add a murder into this series, oh, good. which is horrific. Mm. They refer back to, you don't see it, see it, but they refer back to it in a certain way. Like every time they describe it, it involves, it involves a large giant pot of, of curry. Oh. And when it's referred to in the past tense, it's referred to as boiling curry. Oh. Uh, and I'll leave it there. But, uh, it's oh. like, Oh. Oh, did he really do that? Oh, God, he did. Oh, that character's not here anymore. Oh, God. Oi. Oh, but they were nice. <laughs> like, oh, this is horrible. 
Um, From what you've told me, though, I feel like that's nearly all of the murders in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> God. There is no... There is no... Um, all the deaths are cartoony, and but then when described or referred back to, you go, oh, God, yeah, that is really horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's because not, it's not cartoon logic. It's just visually very yeah. cartoony. Um, the, 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 the aesthetic for the show holds up beautifully. The costume design for this run is amazing, especially for Esme Squalor's costumes. Um, she looks fucking hilarious in most of it um there's some really nice surprise guest turns people popping up here and there patrick warburton gets to play a little bit more than just being lemmy snicket in the omniscient narrator role oh, that's cool uh, because uh, finally we start to learn about the connections that have uh, there are that exist between our <laughs> storyteller and and the story in hand um oh god what's the actor's name she's uh she's rose in get out uh something williams uh, Is it Alison Williams? you think Oh, no. oh god, hang on. Hang on, I'm gonna switch up. Go, 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 go. I'm, I'm catching a wingle, so. I'm well, aren't you, Captain. I'm preparing for our battle. Captain Dingle Dangle. I think it is Alison Williams. It's Alison Williams, yeah. yeah. Uh, she plays a role in it and is an excellent addition to the cast. Um... <laughs> My favourite addition to it all, though, the last story takes place on, on an island with a, and there's a small society there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is looked over by a, a seemingly uh, sort of kindly uh, village elder. Okay. Who's called? Um, he's called Ishmael. Uh, he's called Ishmael. <laughs> and a, a recurring thing in it is people go, "Thank you, Ishmael. Please call me Ish." Um, it's just a, it's just a little thing. Um, in the book, he's quirky and a little bit mysterious, and. Peter McNichol plays him in the show. Oh, and he's yes. excellent. He's so yes. good. Um, it's it's just it is a wonderful conclusion to it all. Uh, and they made the smart decision of making the end just the one episode because it is yeah. in terms of uh, story, it's the most static of all the stories. Like it takes place on one location, okay. so to stretch it to two would have been a bit odd. Yes, um, it would have been too much padding. Yes. Um, but it's such a satisfying conclusion. I can say that as someone who loves the books, I I just I don't mind the changes and the expansions to things because it's an opportunity to spend more time with these characters. Um, it's almost as if adaptations don't diminish the existence of the original material. Yeah, they they provide an <laughs> alternate look at it, an adaptation, if you will. Yes. Um, but and also keep an eye out for Morena Baccarin in uh, a very brief role. Hey, being amazing because it's Morena Baccarin. She's always amazing. Yes. So uh, I like it. yeah, I, if you've not watched it, guys, you can binge watch the whole effing thing in like a week. It's thirteen stories, uh, twenty five episodes. Do it, do it, do it. You won't regret it. If you if you love if you love telly. If you love fun, uh, family-friendly stories with a sinister bent to them. If you like impromptu musical numbers happening at least once a season because you've got Neil Patrick Harris, so why wouldn't you? Uh, if you like Nathan Fillion in a moustache and a turtleneck, like, you need to be watching this show. Alright, alright, I'm now re- I'm There is a really nice subtle reference in season two to, to uh, Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. Oh, fantastic. In, in the scene where you finally get to see Fillion and, and Patrick Harris in a scene together. There is a line of dialogue that's just like, that's in there just to make me smile, you bastards. Reunited. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Very good. Avoid it at all costs, is what I'm saying. Don't watch Excellent. it. Whatever you do, do not do don't, not do not watch this television show. Yeah, d- don't, just just don't, guys. Don't fucking do it. Um, it's amazing. So, young man, you gave me an interesting piece of news when you arrived today. Uh, was it about my rash? N- uh, no, not about the rash. I, why do you want to talk about the rash so much? I just I don't have enough creams. Oh god. Um, creams. Uh, no, no, Cre- no more rash talk. I'm placing a moratorium on rash talk. Um, that's a bit rash. Oh, fuck you. I hate you so much. <sighs> you told me that over at Sony, there is a Ghostbusters sequel <laughs> in development. <laughs> now, I thought that movie didn't do too well. Wow. Oh. What's, what's the crack? What's the crack? Funny you should say that, Matthew, because <laughs> it ain't a sequel to 2016's Ghostbusters Retroactively titled Ghostbusters Answer the Call. What? Sony have just greenlit a greenlit. Ghostbusters movie 
Yeah. That is about to enter production. Yeah. Following on. Yeah. From the original series. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why I'm not rolling my eyes at this. I mean, someone on Twitter summed it up beautifully with that gif from The Simpsons of the kid going, Stop it! Stop <laughs> it! He's already dead! <laughs> <laughs> but Continue. the reason I'm curious about this one is the reboot is being head, uh, headed up and directed by Jason Reitman. Oh, uh, now Jason uh, has been a director in his own right, but the reason um, it, the reason why Jason Reitman's name might ring a bell if you're not a big film boof is because yeah, that surname is the same as his dad's surname, Ivan Reitman, the director of Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters Two. What? Uh, I'm quoting the Empire Online summary here. Yeah? Okay, tell me about the Empire <clears throat> Online summary. He's someone with no small connection to the original Ghostbusters films, as his dad Ivan directed them, and he brought his son along for the ride. I've always thought of myself as the first Ghostbusters fan when I was a six-year-old visiting the set. I wanted to make a movie for all the other fans, Reitman tells Entertainment Weekly. This is the next chapter in the original franchise. It's not a reboot. What happened in the 80s happened in the 80s. This is set in the present day. What happens in the 80s stays in the... No, not in this! Stop. Um, no. uh, Ryan has come to a story that will follow on from his father's two films, working with Monster House's Kill Geenan to write the script. And he has the stamp of approval from Reitman Sr. There'll be a passing of the torch both inside and out, the elder Reitman says. It has a decision. He had It, it was a decision he had to come to himself. Uh, this, this is what I, Ivan Reitman's saying. Yeah. He worked really hard to be independent and developed a wonderful career on his own. So I was quite, su- quite surprised when he came to me with Gil and said, I know I've been saying for 10 years I'm the last person who should make a Ghostbusters movie. But, but... I have this idea. Literally, I was crying by the end of it. It was so emotional and funny. I can't wait to see what they do with it. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Unless you think that um, Jason Reitman is dumping on Paul Feig's effort from 2016. Yeah. I have so much respect for what Paul created with those brilliant actresses and would love to see more stories from them, he adds. However, this new movie will focus on the trajectory of the original series. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing a sequel to Ghostbusters 2016, but... Yeah, but with, not with not Paul, with Paul Feig. Feig. <laughs> no! Uh... Producing, Keep that cast, producing but... sure. Yeah. Not not directing no. and, and not him no, and no, no, no. um Oh god who wrote it, what was the name? I Kate Dipple. Don't know. Not those two writing it, because take away the improv and that movie's weak source as a plot yeah. in general. <clears throat> uh, add the improv and it's weak source with a bunch of distracting improv. Yeah. <laughs> like so like that you fucking know. scene in the Dean's office where he's flipping him off that oh. goes on for six Days. Now, I hope this movie isn't a... Here are the three living Ghostbusters. They're passing the torch. I hope it's not that. But I do hope we get at least one of them in the movie. Yeah. Um, Max Landis' treatment uh, that was doing the rounds a few years back for Ghostbusters 3 had... Uh, Egon had gone... Like, and this was written before Harold Ramis passed away. Yeah. Egon had gone presumably dead... But as the course of the film goes, they realise that he got lost somewhere in his research and is probably in another dimension. And that's part of uh, the story for one of the characters is yeah. trying to figure out like all that stuff. Yeah. Um, Ray is running Ghostbusters New York. Yeah. Uh, Ghostbusters has a f- had a few other uh, franchises set up throughout the States over the course of the last 20 years. Yeah. But... Um, the only two that still exist are the LA and the New York branch because it's all sort of going slowly into bankruptcy. Yep. Um, the LA one is mostly more of a tourist spot nowadays. It's just sort of like hot, <laughs> hot young professionals running the business. And come take photos <laughs> with the vehicle. Whereas the New York one is still kind of trying to do its thing. Um, but it's fell, fallen apart. Uh, they have a bit more backing now because the mayor of New York is Winston Zedmore. Sure. Who's no longer, of course, part of it all, but has always has always kept people like the EPA and that off their back. Yeah. Because he understands the work they're doing is good. It just may not be necessary anymore. He's been on the front lines. And Venkman left uh, years ago without a word to anybody uh, shortly after Egon's disappearance. Um, mm. And it's believed that he's just pissed off somewhere and has a family and 
just doesn't bother bothered about it. He still takes like a. I mean, he's eventually he's still, he's probably still take, has several families. He still takes like a, a, a minor monetary share in the overall like stock of it all, and that's it. Like the only communi- I think he described the only communication Ray's had with him for years is he sees on his bank statement that Bankman's taken this cut. Mm. Like that's it. It's not even a communication. It's just a there he is. He's alive. Mm. Um, so it's like oh, okay, and that that draft was about a new team, one of whom was um, Egon's daughter, who's basically just trying to find out what the hell happened to her dad, and is Ray's like only connection to essentially the life that he had and enjoyed. Mm. So Ray really doesn't want her to leave because it's like it's the only connection I have to my best mate and everything, and it's like oh, it's really sweet. Um, mm. There's a couple of others. There's a kid who uh, has psychic ability like he's starting to learn about it and essentially goes in originally as like an experiment like someone they're going to test and then joins the team because you can at least do something a bit different with that nice nice present the ghostbusters slash lovecraftian version of you know psychic ability and and mediums uh there was also going to be a whole thing where they're sued by a big religious group profiteering off of off of the idea of the dead and an afterlife sure sure it's sure. like so there's great ideas in here like yeah. it works really well um <clears throat> so if they do something like that that'd be great like you know so you, you can have you can have a couple of the characters appear in it but it's not like strictly a thing <laughs> yeah. here's where you find that medium janine runs the business side of it all and is the one who's doing really fucking well with it okay that'd be great have janine in there just stick janine in <laughs> Um, CEO of Ghostbusters International. Yeah, and it's and it's doing really well. Like, mm. if you if you want to make it different from the treatment script that was doing the rounds, <laughs> it's doing really well because she understands how business work. Yeah, like she's on it. <laughs> she's fierce as fuck, and she's savvy, and she doesn't take shit. So she would totally make sure that it worked. <laughs> um, dropping off or picking up. <laughs> <laughs> Very um, good. So I I I mean I'm I'm I'm, I'm I'm excited by the notion because Ivan Reitman's gone. Yes. And Ivan Reitman didn't get to do that with the 2016 one. He was involved mm. in the development to a point and then they basically pushed him away and made him work on Ghost Core, which was going to be the company that then would make expanded media based on the Ghostbusters property. Um, which Sony which, managed Which only to... got around to making a game, which wasn't very good. No. Um... And uh, some escape room slash VR uh, stuff, VR yeah, stuff yeah. In, in Madame Two Swords and some other theme parks, which apparently is very good. And a VR game for PS4, which is dreadful. Because <laughs> it was meant to be five chapters, it ended up being two. Eee. There was a giant delay between them all. Um, and this was all just because Sony kept pulling the plug on budgets. They were just like, no, all right, no, we're going to use that elsewhere. No, we use that elsewhere. But still make us a multi million dollar franchise, but we're going to use that elsewhere. <sighs> like, what's the point? They were working on an animated series as well. Oh no! There was going to possibly be a continuation of the real Ghostbusters slash Extreme Ghostbusters oh, continuity. Oh no! Which would have been great. I'm sad that that never happened now. And that would have been great because you just know it meant that they would have finally re-released the real Ghostbusters and Extreme Ghostbusters on DVD and Blu-ray. I would love to see Extreme Ghostbusters again <laughs> just to see how badly it's aged. Animation wise, it still looks gorgeous. I yeah, watched, but I, watched like a year ago. I mean, like the tone of it and oh, like, yeah, yeah, the fact that it's so nineties, super nineties. Yeah, super, great toys though. The yeah. toys are amazing. Um, Kylie turns up in the comics, doesn't she? Yeah, she's been brought into the because the comics are a yeah, continuation ones, yeah. Of, of the films. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, there's a, a replacement team, and they they her character is so popular that she has been retconned into that universe. Um, Excellent. So, yes. That, yeah, because that's the team spearheaded by Janine. Yes. After they all go missing. Um, they all get stolen away. Uh, God, those comics are great. Damn it! I've I read, read the first, first five vol- volumes and I want to reread them. I read but... the first volume. I've not read any more. I need to get back They're on it. They're really good. Um, so I'm, 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 I am cautiously optimistic and a little bit tickled in the testes by the notion of this. I'm cautiously optimistic <gasps> that I'm going to beat your ass. Sorry, what? In a Pokemon battle. Sorry, what, son? After sending me a gift, you Finally. disrespect me on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> so, as promised last week, we're finally going to have our Pokemon Go battle. <laughs> um, I think we can only do Great League. I don't know. I know um, we're quite we're quite good friends on it, aren't we? Three star. Yeah, I know, but I think I think it only. Uh, 
lets you. Um, let I me think, out four I hours think, at a time before I have to sign in with my care unit. Oh yes, I think it only lets you do certain. Um, I think you have to battle a couple of times before you can go up to the next league. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go on to friends and I'm going to go battle. Right. Oh, and well, we can do Ultra League. Let's do Ultra League. Okay, show me your QR code. No, oh, wait, are you... Go oh. on to the friends menu. Oh my God. Go what is this bullfuckery? <laughs> I've challenged you. Right. My bag is full. I won't receive rewards for this match. You might want to empty your bag first. Yeah, I'm going to empty my bag You get, you get some pretty good rewards on, on battles. All right, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Fascinating audio content. <laughs> Oh. Emptying my bag. I'm going to use a lucky egg. That's what I'm going to do. Um, oh, your invite just came through. Oh, no. Um, do, I don't need to heal anyone, do I? No. no oh, no. The, uh, damage isn't permanent from the battles. Oh, I'm just when, making when sure you, everyone's... When you, out, when you come out of it, they're all... I'm just making sure everyone's at, at, at high health anyway. Uh, high health. 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 I health, 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 I'm going to use a bunch of rare candies on my super soon. Oh, I see. Buffing up and ting, are we? Oh, he's not even close to two and a half thousand CP, so don't worry about him. I health, I health, I Don't worry about him. I health, I health, I health, I health, I health. I've got some space. Now I'm going to invite you to a battle. Um you, okay. sir, are a dirt. I'm you, sorry, sir, are a sec. dirt. Ultra League, let's battle. One second. And I'm going to bring my sexiest team. Oh, God. Just a bag of dicks. Just a, yeah, literally a bag of dicks. Hello, here's my bag of dicks. I'm going to fight you now. I'm going to beat you up on a podcast. Okay. Let's describe... Oh, oh we can't describe who we've got because that'd be a spoiler alert. Well, we can say... We can say who's coming out first. Uh, well, I'll be honest. Like, why break the habit of a lifetime? Hey! All right, so we are <laughs> waiting... Um... I'm waiting for, the, for Chris to choose his team. I've chosen mine. Chris in his <laughs> Team Rocket t-shirt versus me in my Eevee hat. An Eevee hat. I have an Eevee hat. That's a beautiful hat, sir. Yeah, I thought so. I'd like to touch it. I'd like to touch your hat. I'd like to rub your knee. I'm sending out Dragonite versus Chris's Crobat. I don't have a Crobat, you know. Um, yeah, the police took it off of you. Hey! After you busted in that gentleman's knee. Yeah, well, he was bothering me. <clears throat> he was inside a toilet cubicle. Four states away. Yeah. I'm charging up Hyper Beam. I'm charging up Hyper Beam. Damn, oh, he he's out. damn oh. son. Oh my god. Oh, that was good because your crowbat was giving Dragonite some trouble. Um, Hound Doom. Love a Hound Doom. One I of my love favorite you. Pokemon. Um, and he's going to take out my Dragonite imminently. Dragonite oh, is down. Boom, with his Dragonite rib cage on the outside. Hmm, next one. Houndoom's rib cage is round the, the outside. Now I'm regretting my team makeup because now I've got Jolty on out. And originally I had, uh, yeah. That's had, filthy what you just said. I had someone on my team that would have made shorter work of um, Houndoom. Of my Hounded Doom. And now... Of my, um, of my Rufus Hound Doom. I've got an uphill struggle because the only other Pokemon I've got after Jolteon is weak. Can we just talk about how your move Doom. has the most disgusting name in the world? Discharge. Jolteon uses Discharge. Yeah. That is disgusting. Discharge. Oh, you Jolteon got his Discharge all over my couch. <laughs> oh, man. Everywhere. <laughs> your Jolteon has Discharged on my shoes. Again? <laughs> I thought he was house trained. Dirty shoes. Oh yes, oh, oh yes. Oh, I'm gonna electric shock, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, he's got his discharge. Oh, oh down you go. His discharge went off in my hair. Ampharos. Okay, let's see what Ampharos can do against me. <laughs> Absolutely nothing, because it's two electric Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely sod all. Yeah. Your rate of recharge for your discharge is really good. Yeah, it's it, well, it's not that, that powerful a charge move. You can unlock secondary charge move as well. Um, I mean, you're doing it again already. That's yes. nuts. Well, I'm doing a lot of damage to you, and I'm getting a lot of damage done to me. 
So, like, I'm going to go down pretty soon now. You say that, I think um, you're going to... I think you're going to... Oh. Oh. Yeah, see? Oh, no, I was, I was I like to know health less. So who am I up okay. against now? Metagross. Not a Metagross! I don't know what these Metagross. things are! Metagross. It's a Steel Psychic dual... Uh, golem thing. Dual, dual type. Not to be confused with you Golem. You use Zap... Oh, no! Whoa! No way! <laughs> One Zap Cannon took me right out! I, I had, like, nothing left. I had, like, no health left. Yo, Wow! Oh my god. Should we do one more, Cocker? I'm up for that. I'm bloody up for that, yeah. Should we do one more? I'm gonna have git. a slightly different team this time. Same by Crime and Eve. Um and we're gonna see what happens. For those watching at home, how are you watching? Yeah, why are you watching how how are you watching us? Um creepy fuckers. <laughs> so second match, Chris won the first. <coughs> Let's see if we can win this one. And we'll do best of three. Oh if not. Um Oh meets. Oh, meats. Would you like to see some meats? Yes. Okay, so if Chris good. wins, this one is the champ. If not, it goes to a tiebreaker. Nice. Oh, Muck. Muck versus Dragonite. Now, it's funny, because what's, what's Ekans spelled backwards? Uh, <laughs> God, death. <laughs> <laughs> I think was the consensus. Oh, my God. We reached on That's that That's never going to go away, is it? <laughs> that clip exists. And it's on the internet. It. Oh, Muck. Oh, is he going to get me? Is he going to get me? Oh, he just, oh he just, not quite. He just discharged all over you. <laughs> Sludge waved. My muck just discharged all oh, over you. I'm charging up my hyper beam. Coming for you. Coming for you. Oh, you blocked me with a cheeky shield. Yeah, that's weird about the the, the mechanics on this. Is you get you get two shields to use. Yeah, you don't, you don't fight. block. It's weird. It's really uh, very yeah. strange. So you sort of have to basically pick and choose. You have to sort of yeah. guess guess how much health you've got and if it's going to sustain you to the next fight. Um, basically. It's really, very really strange. <laughs> du, 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 du. Right, that's mucked down thanks to Hyper Beam. My Dragonite has got a sliver of health. And I've got an Ice type, so that's going to take me straight down. Yeah, there we go. I just slapped you with my Jinx. Um, That's not a euphemism. But here comes Daddy. Oh, it's Gengar. Daddy Gengar. Daddy Gengar. Um, He's one of my favourite Pokemon designs. Gengar's great. He's also a... It's like if Bart Simpson were a beanbag. He also matches up to, Clef to Clefable. He's a silhouette. He's, he's basically Clefable's shadow. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. Have they ever written that into the Pokedex entries? I don't think so. Pokédex entries are horrifying. Yes, they are. What are your favourites? Um, <laughs> I'm a big fan of uh, Drift Driftloon. Oh, <gasps> is that one looks like a balloon with little hands the on balloon, strings and it carries with children hands away? Hands it carries children to the underworld. What? How? How do you get carried to the underworld? Uh, well, I don't know. Does that, does that mean in Pokemon there's an underworld? Yeah. Oh, Rhyperia! Rhyperia versus Omastar. Yeah, you're completely wiping me oh, out. Oh shit! I'm actually doing a lot of damage to you. <laughs> Goodbye, Rhyperia. Oh, my, my. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Omastar. <laughs> I'm so proud. Oh, Omastar. Make, the best sat-nav. Make daddy proud. 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 <laughs> um, oh, God, did you seriously just quote that movie? Yes. Uh, all right, oh best of three. God. Let's see who wins this one. Oh, my God. Uh, proud. 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 Um, <laughs> fucking disgraceful. <laughs> okay, slightly different <laughs> team again. This one's for the win. What does the winner get? Uh, nothing. Lifelong um, respect, but not from me. Respectpa, or for our audience. Lifelong respectpa. Lifelong respecter. <laughs> Right, wrong, respect, right? Respecter. Ah, yes. Typhlosion. Oh, nice. Typhlosion. I haven't got a Typhlosion. I present my Typhlosion to you. Yes, and I, I fight you with my Gengar. His move is going Ooh, to be pretty ineffective to begin with. You are doing some damage, he's sunshine. Just scratching you. It's a fire Pokemon, but would you like to know a weird little thing about my Typhlosion? What's that? He doesn't have a wow. single fire move in his repertoire. He bites. Took me right down. He bites, and as you're about to see on your Kabutops, his special... It's Solar Beam. Oh, I really should have blocked that. So, my Typhlosion of Fire Pokemon. Oh! oh! Whoa! My, my Fire Pokemon's main move is a grass move. Took my Kabutops right down. <laughs> um, that Typhlosion is gnarly, man. Thank you, darling. 
Oh, Nagyo daling. Daling. Nagyo daling. 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 Yep, daling. Yep. Cross poisoned you down. Well, I'm yes, I did. Ramble you up a treat, son. Oh, shit, son. Look at Although, him stomping around. Gramble is a fairy type, so you might want to use one of your protect shields against this cross poison. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. Thanks for, thanks for the hit. Thanks for the hit. I mean, I've already lost. I've only got... It's super effective, so it works through the shield. Oh, but only a little bit. But that's kind of cool, though. That there is a way to get around the shield to a point if, if it's a, a move that's uh, super effective against yeah. the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a tiny bit damage. Oh, oh, I got you halfway down. I didn't, even, I, I didn't even get to whip out my Nidder Queen. Oh, no, not your Nidder Queen. There we go. I got a rare candy for that. That was oh, good. Me too. Um, there we go. Thank uh, you, darling. Yeah, you beat me. Two out of three. Ain't bad. <laughs> well done. Um, <laughs> sorted. Right, let's get on to something uh, else. And we're not going to spend too long on this, but um, I'm just going to run through some things that you might find amusing slash... Uh, terrifyingly, uh, existentially horrifying. Um, Brexit. So, we don't what, want to talk about that on this podcast. One of the things that's been popping up on social media in the last couple of days is the is uh, 2009 to 2019. The, 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 the difference that's been made. Yeah, the 10-year challenge. Yes. So I thought we'd look back at what was going on in the world of pop culture in 2009. Just briefly. Oh, shimmy. Because the answer will shock you. Oh, God. Clickbait drop at one hour and 16 minutes. Um, <laughs> Timing. So this is this is an article from The Guardian in 2008. This article was published on the 27th of December, 2008. Of things to look forward to in 2009. Oh, God. Up. <laughs> Up came out in 2009. Do you remember how much you weeped, openly weeped in the cinema in 2009 when you watched Up? Because I do. I, I don't. I watched it on Blu-ray oh, for four, months, four months into 2010. I was just in bits in the cinema. Um, Monsters vs. Aliens, that came out. Oh, God, um, yeah. Uh, Coraline? That was 2009. Oh, oh God. Fucking... Uh, do you know what? Coraline, late 2009 that came out? Yeah, yeah. That was the last film I saw before I moved to London. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, In the same so... way, I just avoid movies for a month. Uh, Bruno came out in 2009. Sasha Baron Cohen's the... Austrian fashion designer yeah, character. The, the not as compelling follow-up to that. <sighs> That was still yeah. funny for pushing uncomfortable social norms with, uh, uh, you know, very uppity people. Yes. But, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not the, yeah. Oh, mm. how about these super memorable, um, <laughs> the super memorable TV comedies? Oh my God, these British or like, American? Uh, uh, Br- British mainly. Uh, oh, free- amazing. I Channel- can't wait to hear these things that I definitely remember and are still around to this day. Channel 4's Free Agents. With Sharon Horgan. What? What the hell was <laughs> she's that? A sh- she's a showbiz agent failing miserably to fall in love. But then she went on to make Catastrophe, which is great, so there we go. Um, I've never heard of this. Uh, Stephen Mangum was in it as well. Uh, FM, with Chris O'Dowd and Kevin Bishop as DJs at an indie radio station. I vaguely remember <laughs> that. Um, That's so weird. Clive Swift and Roger Lloyd Pack in Old Guys. No. <laughs> no. Um, Sanjeev Bhaskar. <laughs> that sounds made up. Sanjeev Bhaskar in a call centre comedy called Mumbai Calling. No. Um, is... Oh, God, no. Uh, no. What? Martin Freeman and Rachel Sterling body swapping in Boy Meets Girl. Uh, what? <laughs> These are things that came out in 2009, Chris. Um, this was... A... Wait, what? I uh, know. Um... Joe Brand uh, in Getting On as a Nurse, which was directed by Peter Capaldi. You know, I do recall that. I one, remember actually. when I didn't, yeah. watch, I didn't watch it. I didn't know Peter Capaldi directed it. Um, uh, some other bits was that, and pieces. Was it, was, like, was it like BBC Two or BBC Four? Uh, BBC Four. Yeah, I can't remember yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, the Damned United with Michael Sheen. That um, came out. That was really good. That was a really that good was movie. Ten years ago. That's yeah, terrifying. That was ten fucking years ago. <laughs> Um, what else we got? 
QR codes. That's when they first rocked up 10 years QR ago. QR codes, that's when they started to become mainstream, yeah. What a weird thought. And now, there's to, a QR, and now there's a QR code in the Spectrum quote, game. To quote this article, <laughs> Developed in Japan as a means of tracking car parts, QR codes, highly complex barcodes, embedded with data will increasingly feature on products, locations, and media. You, users can scan them with camera phones to download extra content, says Tom Savagar. I mean, that's not incorrect. They're not as common now, but you do still find them on products. Mm. That's a that's a weird mm. thought. That's a weird thought. That it's not that they didn't take off; it's that their time has been and gone. Mm. That's the weird, and there hasn't been a replacement. People just realised I could just read the label. <laughs> I could just read the label. The Imaginarium of Doctor Panassus. That's ten years old. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, because it was released the year after Heath Ledger passed away. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Crodman dude in the flaming sword of fire. What? And being human. Wait, being human? They were 2009. Demons was a 2009 thing. Along with wait, the... wait, wait, wait. Did being human start in 2009 or was it continuing in 2009? Yes. It was starting in 2009. Oh, God, I feel old. I loved being human. I devoured being um, human. Or the movie of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I recall. The uh, oh, fucking the Dorian Gray movie. Oh, that piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, and the Robert Downey Jr. Jude Law Show, Lock Holmes. Yeah, well, I, we, yeah. Was, we, we were saying this the other day as well that, um, and in fact, before this, I brought it up again, that 2009 was when I was guest hosting on a radio show mm-hmm. about um, films. And that was when the stories first started circulating about a Sherlock Holmes comedy movie starring Sasha Baron Cohen as Holmes yeah. and Will Ferrell as Watson. Yeah. That same movie went into production hell and finally arrived last month as Holmes and Watson starring and Will Ferrell And it should have stayed and John there! John Riley as Watson. Just think about that. That film took ten years to be made and it was not worth it um, at all. Reese Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton did a little show called Psychoville in 2009. Yeah, that was the first series of Psychoville. Um, Joss Whedon uh, debuted Dollhouse yeah. in 2009. Yeah, yeah. Which didn't have the longevity that uh, people wanted to. Um, <laughs> but Eliza Dushku, yay. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes! Oh, remakes. Here we go. Um, Bad Lieutenant. Was a two thousand nine oh, movie. Oh, Port Call New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I like that. I, ha- like, I like that remake. Harvey Keitel, um, we headed up the uh, U.S. version of Life on Mars in the Philip Lannister role. What Car- Keitel played? Um, Apparently played so. Part? Yeah. Really? Uh, I yes. didn't know that. See that that makes me want to see it. Um. Well, I remember. That, I remember the consensus for that overall was, we've got Life on Mars though. Like even oh. America were like, we already got it. Th- like we can already watch it whenever we want. The three D My Bloody Valentine remake. Yeah, kickstarting the three D uh, boom the, uh, just before Avatar sort of launched it at the end of the year. The Friday the Thirteenth remake. <laughs> the first Friday the, the first Friday the Thirteenth remake. remake. Um, <laughs> and fucking hell! Oh, the American uh, Prisoner remake with J- uh, uh, Jim Caviezel yeah. and Liam McKellen. Which was shit. Oh my god, that was ten years ago. Star Trek Eleven. Yeah, oh, of course you had the eight first day from Star Trek. Oh, that's even. Do you know what? That's even weirder now because obviously the news with that recently being that four has been shit can now. Yeah, yeah. Like, what a weird thought. Ten years. Star Trek. Ten years. Um, Underworld Three. <laughs> um. Little did we know. <laughs> was it 2017 where we got the final Resident Evil and the final Underworld uh, in the yeah. same month? I don't. Th- I think there's going to be another Underworld. It was weird though. It's like, but I don't. I don't husband think husband and wife director and star team has released the yeah, next I chapter don't... in their early 2000s yet still ongoing series where a leather clad lady <sighs> fights creature overly CGI creatures in labs. The difference being, <laughs> Kate Beckinsale. I don't think is with Lam Wiseman anymore. Oh, so I don't think we're going to get any of those. Um, Daybreakers. 
Daybreakers. Have you seen Daybreakers? I've got Daybreakers. Daybreakers is yeah. really good. I like it. It's very, it's a, it's very um, low key, weirdly, but it's got a great yes. premise. Ethan Hawke's really good in it. And, yes. And uh, Willem Dafoe's great in it as well, if I remember correctly. Oh, a True Blood started in 2009. Jesus. Fucking hell, man. Oh. Oh. The superhero thing hadn't really gone into full gear yet. No, it hadn't. But which we do out, get yeah. Watchmen. Yeah, the, the which is the, the for the most part like well remembered. I was talking about this with a friend the other stuff. night. It's an adaptation that actually suffers from being too faithful in yeah. terms of narrative and structure. If you want, if you want to yeah. try and adapt the book as close to the book as possible, it needs to be a TV series. Yes, with a very high budget. Yes. <laughs> um, like a film will not do it justice, but Snyder did a decent job. It's fondly remembered. X Men Origins Wolverine get the fuck came out, out in 2009. Get the fuck out. Uh, get the fuck out. I I was I ripped the DVD of that recently for my for my Homeplex library, and I would regret just it I, I well I just I, every time I do a rip I just do a quick scan through to make sure it's come out okay, and just Wade, is that you? Oh, fucking awful! Just the worst. Lee Schreiber's Sabretooth. Yeah. Pretty decent, and it and it because fight with them in the lumber yards, pretty decent. Especially because I recently watched uh, the original X Men, and that like their mishandling of Sabretooth and that is legendary. Um, and it's weird because Origins would have been the pl- the obvious place to put a hint as to why he's like that later. Yes, but they don't. No, they don't. It's, do the, it. it's their first instance of oh, fuck continuity. Um, because after that they do it a lot. Like we get returning characters who are completely different actors and everything with no explanation. <laughs> Is this when the Dennis the Menace that you starred in started? No, the previous iteration kicked off. Okay. Uh, so Dennis, Dennis and Nasha started in 2009. Okay. Which was re- soft rebooted animation style and tone and voice cast with our version in 2013. Okay. So yeah, this, um, was, this was the Sophie Aldrin version. We've got the Wes Anderson Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yes. Damn fine, um, damn fine movie. The Spike Jones Where the Wild Things Are. A Spike Jones joint. Hey. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, That's a Spike Lee joint. <laughs> Spike Jones, don't take Spike Lee's joint. Oh God, uh, Zoe Saldana uh, was starting to get recognised for J.J. Abrams' Star Trek and Avatar. What movie called Avatar? To be fair, that was the year that her sort of star yeah. like rose to prominence. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what else we got? Twilight star Robert Pattinson. Cat. Kat Dennings in Nicanora's Infinite Playlist, yeah. Yeah. Tom Hardy uh, was getting ready to do Bronson. Wait, sorry. 2009, how does it describe him? Already a veteran of stage and screen. A veteran? Hmm, he's been, he's been around for ages. <laughs> yeah, but 2009, Tom Hardy's most prominent cinematic role was probably Star Trek Nemesis. Um, Sher Sharona was starting to pop up on pe- people's radar after Atonement because she was going to do she was in Lovely Bones, which was Peter Jackson's adaptation of a book which tanked. Hang on. Was 2009 the year Bronson came out? Yeah. That is a great film. Yeah. That is a really good film. Really uncomfortable watch. Yeah. Hardy's brilliant in that. Um. So yeah, 2009 was a fucking weird year. <laughs> Would you say that this year is a glow up in comparison? Um... So far. Are we talking about, like, in terms of pop culture, absolutely. Like, we are in a golden age for the stuff we like. Yes. Everything else. Everything else. Is fucking awful. Is shitting dreadful. Politics on both sides of the Atlantic is in a sorry fucking state. And unlike 2009, we can't just bat it all away with one sentence. Which is, thanks Obama. Fucking hell. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Would anybody like to uh, go to my private yacht? Yes, please. Well, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. Oh? I'd like to stop recording this podcast now. Why? Because we're done. We've covered everything on the agenda. <laughs> yeah, but that now means by son's law, something big will happen in the next two days. Yeah, well, you know, we'll talk about it next week. Oh. Hey, do you know what? Fucking Punisher starts on Friday. Does it? Season two of Punisher drops on Netflix on Friday. Christ, I, the I, final I, season of Punisher. It, of the, mm, <laughs> they will. I was going to say, guarantee t- it. Within the next two weeks, we'll it. get. A, oh yeah, there's not going to be a season three. 
Oh, God. Deb Brown Wall, I think, has confirmed that her appearance in that as Karen Page is the last thing she's done. Currently. So yeah. she's, she's not recorded anything as Karen for Jessica Jones. No, no, no. no. Which, which makes sense that that character. Yeah, not but at the same time, it's sort of the only reason I think she'll have pointed that out is because it's that whole thing of them yeah. going, "Yeah, we don't get it either." Yeah, I'm done with Karen, and just you know, I really hope she's not done with Karen. She's amazing. Yeah, um, but I do worry about her eyes just melting out of her face at times. She does cry, just constantly. She's a crier. During series one, they did the press like New York Comic Con or whatever, and she was talking about the stories they tell, and she starts crying. She's like, oh, "I'm really sorry." It's just like. <sighs> Oh, and she starts talking about the passion of the fans and how much it really, it really encourages her, like the to want to be the fans. to be the best she can be in this stuff, and she feels the love for it already. That's and she sweet. starts crying like, that "Deborah, is... you're fine. Deborah, you're okay." No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, hardest working tear ducts in television, alongside yeah. Grant Gustin. So maybe we'll talk Grant about Gustin that. Grant Gustin cries all the freaking time. Yes. Uh, I presume he's still crying. I've not watched it for two seasons. He's been crying very fast, so you can't know. You can't see. Barry, cry faster. <laughs> oh, sorry, it sped up to so it be. Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's big damn cast for this week. Thanks for listening. As always, head over to YouTube, uh, where you can see this and Adventures in Backlogging. Twitch, TV for some eventually back logging streams, and keep an eye out for other bits and pieces coming up uh, as and when we get to them. Um, at Big Damn Cast on Twitter, Big Damn Contact at gmail.com, send us your emails, thoughts, <laughs> diatribes, all that kind of stuff. We love hearing it. Um, Cry faster, Barry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> goodbye for another week. Uh, be good to each other. Uh, Bye! <laughs>